Hello, Business 330 students. This is Professor Hassey <clears throat> speaking live and in color this rainy Tuesday, November 8th, Election Day in Claremont, California. So we begin our week three of business finance study, and our topic this week is the past, present, future in finance. And that is aptly uh, talked about and pointed out in chapter five, the time value of money present value, future value, annuity, amortization. Those are all key concepts and key ways of determining value in finance. Remember the goal of business finance, corporate finance, any finance is to maximize shareholder value. One of the ways of determining maximization of shareholder value is determining the value of an investment today in relationship to the future. What is that investment going to produce as a return? Is that return greater than the cost of the investment or the asset today? A very key concept in finance that we'll be reviewing this week in chapter five. You also have a second assignment this week, which is about chapter five and examples of the time value of money of which you are to solve uh, in assignment five. Assignment one has been completed. Uh, make sure if you have not posted yet, you do so to avoid any loss of late posting points. Uh, remember, if you do need extra time on an assignment, please feel free to let me know and that can be granted. We're also uh, this week finishing up our professor interviews. I had some interviews last night, finishing up that this evening. If you have not signed up, for a professor meeting, you need to do so today, November 8th. If you do not and talk to me today, November 8th, you will get a zero for that work. So please pay attention to your Blackboard, pay attention to the videos and all will be well. I will review assignment one in my Friday update video when the grades will be posted for this assignment number one work. Remember, assignments are our practice, practice on the concepts, the calculations, the definitions of the work for that particular week or weeks. And then it is also highlighted again in examinations and also highlighted again in the paper that you will do later on in this course. So we'll take a look at assignment two a little bit later, but let's take a look at our topics for chapter five. Okay, we're at our Blackboard site, which you all should be familiar, familiar with. And if you're not, please get familiar as soon as possible. Our work is gonna be coming fast and furious now that we're beginning the third week of our eight week course. Let's take a look at our schedule, making sure everybody's aware of it. Assignment number one was due last Sunday. The grades will be posted this week. Assignment number two, worth 10% of your grade is going to be posted, is posted now due this Sunday. The next week after that is our midterm examination, 20% of your course grade. The midterm is of those first four weeks of class. After that, get a couple of weeks off. Then we have December 4th, the next assignment. Our case paper, which will be posted in a couple of weeks, is due on December 11th, and then the final examination, December 18th. Please note the dates and what's coming up. One of the issues that I discuss in our student professor meetings is your ability to manage your time during these short eight-week courses. If you need any help with that time management or need any help with anything, that's the purpose of talking to me about it. Any way I can help you, I would like to do so. So that's our schedule coming up. If you go to the assignments and examinations file folder, you'll see assignment number two, very similar to assignment number one, two files are posted, both exactly the same, a PDF and a Word doc file. Uh, please complete that file and post it to this file folder by midnight, November 13th. One of the issues we're having with some students is they have, find it difficult to post or work with Blackboard. The, one of the key things is number one, make sure you have a working pass, password. You, you have a password that works on a regular basis. It's 
It's there's no problems with it. Secondly, read the instructions, follow the examples. Uh, you should be able to do that. But if again, if you have difficulties until you don't wait a week and then tell me, oh, I had trouble posting a week ago. Tell call contact me immediately if you're having trouble with Blackboard. I can help you immediately through email, through your discussion post, through Zoom, or even a telephone call. But don't wait. Remember, we don't have much time to waste in this class. So please let me know immediately if you are having difficulties and we'll help you that. Here's our week number three file folder, our learning assignments for this week and the file folder where we have our agenda for this week, which you saw when we came on this video, there's our agenda. We have our review uh, problems and re which are being reviewed in this lecture uh, Excel spreadsheet, which we'll be looking at in just a minute. There's the spreadsheet right there. You can download that. Those are great templates and how to calculate the various examples of the time value of money. There's a PowerPoint and a video about uh, our text, chapter five, a brief explanation. Our finance fact this week, remember the first two weeks we had the S&P 500, we had the Dow Jones Industrial Index. This week we have the NASDAQ. What is the NASDAQ? One of the three market indicators on your portfolio. And then a final look at some videos explaining bonds and stocks and what is stocks from our prior week work. And then finally, a video that I urge all of you to read. It's about our library resources associated with this finance class. Where to look up information, where to look up financial information about any company, any public company in the world. We have a database. It's called DNB Hoover's database. You have free access to that as a student. Even though you are online, the library at the University of Laverne is available to you 24 seven. I urge you, if you're a business student or any type of student, get to know the library. Vast resources there to help you. That video explains that. And I urge you to watch that video about your library resources. And then a variety of other videos explaining basically what I'll be doing about following up with the time value of money. So that's our week five, three information. Please review it. It will help. Okay, here's a spreadsheet that's located in week number three that explains the key points of chapter five and the time value of money. Remember from our accounting days, the key, one of the key important financial statements is the balance sheet. Assets equals liabilities plus equity. Liabilities are debts, both short-term accounts payable and long-term bonds, mortgages. Equity is stock, stock issued by the company to investors and retained earnings the amount of profits the company retains after they distribute dividends to the shareholders. The combination of debt and equity equals how assets are funded. And what are assets? Assets are buildings, inventory, land, cash, receivables, computer systems, anything that produces a return an asset, something you own that produces revenue, produces profits, hopefully, produces cash flow. To get those assets, you borrow money and issue equity. That's the core of the balance sheet and the core of corporate finance or any finance. It's always important to understand the concept of what assets are valued at at any point in time. What is their present value today? What is their future value based on the potential of earning and growing into the future? How do you measure that growth? It's these three areas right here. The principal, how much of the, how many dollars are invested in that asset? The interest, how is that interest going to, what is the amount of growth rate of that asset over time? Also, what did it cost you in interest? to acquire that asset. 
and also the time period involved. How long do you own the asset? Not how long you own the asset, just owning it, but how long financially do you own the asset? If you guys remember, if you remember the depreciation from accounting, depreciation is how you depreciate a fixed asset over time. Well, we're given depreciation schedules that set, set the length of time of depreciation. One year, two years, three years, five years, seven years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. That's how long you depreciate. That's the time involved in calculating the value of an asset, the depreciation or expected life of the asset financially. So to know all these terms, you can determine the future value of money, the present value of the money, the present value and future value of cash flows, and this is what chapter five is all about, understanding how to calculate that. Now you can use a calculator, you can even use your cell phone, but in this course and courses in your business program, you use, you use spreadsheets to calculate and make these calculations. One of the key functions of a spreadsheet is what is called formulas, the formula function or the formula table in a spreadsheet, be it Excel, Google Sheets, Mac numbers, the formulas, and you have functions to do those calculations. That's what we'll be doing in this spreadsheet to highlight some of the problems of chapter five. You'll be asked to do these calculations in assignment two. You'll be asking to be asked to do these calculations in your case paper in this class, on your midterm examination, on your final examination. All these calculations are necessary to do and understand as a part of financial management. So let's look at problem four from chapter five. It asks you to determine the future values of $100. I have $100 today and I invest it. I invest it at an annual expected growth rate over a period of time. What is that hundred dollars going to be worth at the end of that time if it's compounded annually at that interest rate. In other words, what is the future value? The principal is a hundred dollars. In this case, the interest is eight percent. In this case, the time period is 10 years. So I go to my function and formula calculation on my spreadsheet. Formulas, function, and now I bring up a series of functions. I go to financial, the pull down menu and pull down financial. And now I look for the future value function, FV. There it is right there, FV. I hit okay. And now I can put in the information of principal rate and time, and I can calculate the future value of that $100. First of all, the interest rate in this example is 8%. The number of periods are 10 years. I'm not making any payment. This is not an annuity. I have a present value of $100. What is $100 going to be in 10 years compounded annually at 8%? Notice I typed in minus 100. If I put just in $100 there, the number will still be the same, but it will be in a negative number. To avoid confusion and how the logarithm works is you put in negative principal, present value, because that's indicating I'm spending the money today. I get $215.89. That's the future value of $100 at 8% for 10 years. Now, what would that value be if I had a lower interest rate? Same calculation, just I use a different parameters. Financial, FV. Now the interest rate is not 8%, but 4%. I just type in interest rate of 4%. Still 10 periods, and still the present value is minus 100. And notice I get $148.02. So $100 plus 8%, $100, that principal plus 8%, plus 8, 10 times I get 148 at 4%. Now let's say I make the period longer, 20 years, same $100, same interest rates, function, 
for future value, FV. I want you to practice these on your own and see if you come up with these numbers. 8%, 20 periods now, 20 years, same present value minus 100. And notice we're going to naturally make more money. The investment is going out longer. Then we have, let's do the same calculation at 4%. As long as you get a, a handle on these functions, naturally in Mac numbers, they set up a little bit differently, but the same format is basically the same with the parameters. Here, now the rate is 4%, 20 periods, and still minus 100. And there you go, 219.11. So that's how you calculate the future value of a number. I got a number now, what's it gonna be in the future? Compounded in this case, annually. Now, if this was compounded at quarterly, all right? If this was compounded quarterly, the calculation would be this, 8% annually, but compounded quarterly for 10 years. So I would go to the same format function, future value, but now the interest rate is quarterly. So that means it's 2% per period, right? 8% annual, there's four quarters in a year. So that's 2% per period. But now it's for 10 years compounded quarterly. So that's 40 periods, right? 2% 40 times a compounded quarterly. The present value is still 100, but look what our number will be. 220.80. Notice at 4% or 8% compounded quarterly, I'm making about five bucks more than I am if it's compounded annually. Okay, in this case, that doesn't sound like a big deal, but if you're looking at thousands and millions of dollars, that is a big deal. So one of the key things is understand what is the time period? Is it annually, quarterly, like our savings accounts at our banks, compounded daily? And then you would take the annual interest rate and divide it by those number of periods in the year to determine your interest rate per period. That's important to remember. Okay. Now let's say we want to take a look at what would be the value of $100 in the future and what is its present value today. Okay. For example, right now we calculated the future value of $100 as being $215.89. Okay. What is its present value? Well, we're just going to go the opposite way we're gonna take 215.89 and discount it back to today. It's called discounting, all right? But let's say we're gonna use the inflation rate to determine this. So let's say I'm investing money at 8%, but my current inflation rate is 5%. So that's gonna knock 5% off the return over those 10 years because that's my interest rate or cost of money. So let's say I go in now to formulas, function, and now I go to financial, but I now go to present value, PV. I'm determining the value today of a future amount, present value. So my interest rate would be the inflation rate, 5%. That's my cost of money. Number of periods would be 10. And the future value would put in 215.89 which is the future value of that $100. So now we're taking into account inflation and are we still going to make money off that investment? Well, notice the number is $132.54. So yes, taking into account inflation, we're making $132.54 on that $215.89. So we're losing quite a bit, but we're still making 32 bucks of the original investment, taking into account inflation. We're earning 8% a year, but our cost of money is 5%. That's our discount rate. So that's what it's truly worth at the end, at today, taking into account inflation. Does that make sense? So naturally, the higher the inflation, the more it cuts into the present value of that generated asset. Let's take a look at inflation with our 
10 years at 4% interest rate. And this is going to be something very interesting. Watch this. Formulas, function, <coughs> excuse me, financial, present value. The interest rate now is, the inflation rate is 5%, like it was before. It's still 10 periods. But now our future value is 148.02. Because that's the 4% earning over 10 years. What is our investment worth? $90.87. And that's a perfect example of inflation. When our return is 4%, but the cost of money and in inflation is 5%, notice my value is actually less than my original investment. Inflation is eating away that return. And that's what's going on exactly today in the markets. The return on the investment is less than the inflation rate. You're not making, matter of fact, you're losing money, real money. And that's what's freaking out a lot of people these days in these economic times of high inflation. But that's a perfect example. So let's take a look at this in terms of the 20 years. All right, now it's out a little longer, but the interest rates of compounding are same. So is our inflation. So let's take a look at tw 20 years at 8%. We go back to the present value function. Now the inflation rate is still 5%. We're still, we're looking at 20 periods. And what's our future value we're looking at? One, 466, 466, 10. What is that present value? Okay, 175.67. We're still making money but we're losing quite a bit over those 20 years to inflation. And that's, that's making the example that 5% is going to be inflation rate for every year, which probably will not be the case, but that's just for the sake of argument. So let's take a look at the 4% for 20 years. Function, present value. It's good that you practice these because we're gonna be doing a lot of this and you'll be doing a lot of this in other courses as well. 5% inflation, 20 periods. Now it's at 4%, so our future value is 219.11. Whoops, we're really losing money here because it's out longer, 20 years. So notice it's well below uh, our original investment of $100. If I'm earning 4% in inflationary, inflationary times over 20 years of 5%, boom. We have to find a better investment there. So again, this is the dilemma in financial markets today is that lower uh, interest rates are lower and return rates are lower than inflation that cuts into the value of the assets over time. A very key important uh, concept in finance. And there's two examples, future value, present value of money. Future value is taking a sum of money today. What is it worth in the future? Present value is taking money in the future. What is it today at whatever discount you're using? And inflation sometimes is the discount rate. And when we get to our case paper in a couple of weeks, the weighted average cost of capital for a company is our discount rate. Clear as mud, huh? Well, let's take a look at another example of present value is what is the true value of a flow of money into the future? What is it worth today? All right. So here's an investment. I'm, I'm investing $700 in an asset. And that asset is going to generate $200 of return profit the first year, $400 in the second year, and $300 in the third year. Well, if I total all those up, that's $900. So I'm investing $700 today to get $900 in the future over three years. Now, when you think about, look at that, you go, hmm, I, that's pretty good. I might, I might do that. I'm making money. I'm making $200 of my original investment. But remember, how did you get that $700 to invest in the asset? Where did that money come from? You had to, it had to come from someplace. Did, it, did you borrow it? Did you issue stock? Did you use past profits? Did you use money from a savings account? Did you use money from an existing investment to cash out and use that 700, yeah, that money 
that capital had to come from someplace. And this is where we get the cost of capital. It cost us 6% to get this money of $700 that's gonna generate $900 into the future. So what is the true value of that money today? Well, we will determine the present value of each one of these dollars and see what that totals to today's value and how does it compare to the $700. So, okay. So I'm making $200 in the first year at 6%. So I go back to my formulas function. And now I remember I'm taking money in the future, $200. What is it today? So that's present value, PV. The interest rate is 6%. That's our discount rate. This is for one year in the future. And its future value is $200. What is that $200 worth today? $188.68. Okay, cool. $400, year two. What is its present value? PV. Six percent. Now it's not one period, but two periods, two years ahead of time. We're earning four hundred dollars as the future value. That present value is three hundred and fifty-six dollars. Cool. And the last year, year three. Present value. Six percent is our cost of money. Now it's three years out and the future value is $300 minus 300, we get 251.89. So that's the present value of that $900 discounted at 6%, which would it cost us to get the $700 of investment. What is this total? That totals $796.56 at a cost of 6%. In other words, we're still making $96.56. We're not making $200 because we're taking into account the cost of capital. Now that cost of capital could be the inflation rate if you want to, or it could be what it actually physically costs you in interest to get the $700 to invest. So notice I'm still making money, but not as much, but it gives us a better perspective of the present value of that investment based on the amount of revenue or excuse me, profits that that will generate. Now, if you notice, this was kind of cumbersome. We had to go year by year by year to calculate this. What happens if we had a project over 20 years? Well, this gets a little monotonous. There's a way of combining all these into one calculation. And I wanna show you that right now. It's right over here. Formula, function. And instead of looking at the financial function PV, I want to look for NPV, net present value. There it is right there, net present value. Again, the rate is 6% still. But now I'm going to lump all those values into one line. I'm now just going to go back to my chart here and just paint. Year one, two, and three. And notice in the values in the formula, it puts in the cell numbers, D25 to D27. That's taking in those three years. All I have to do now is hit OK. And golly, Gomer, I still get 796.56, just like I did here. But in one keystroke, one formula, I did all that work. This is gonna be very helpful when we look at capital budget analysis in our case paper, looking at 20 years of cash flow and discounting them back into the present value, just like we're doing here. But here we're only using three years, 20 years. This one calculation using NPV, it combines the three years is gonna be helpful. Okay, let's make sure we save this when we're done. So we've looked at future value, present value, and present value of what is called an annuity. Annuity means a series of payments in the future. What is its present value? Now, one last thing to look at. It's called amortization. Now you might think, what the hell is amortization? 
Well, amort you guys deal with amortization all the time, especially if you are running your own personal finance. You got a car loan, that's an amortized loan. You got a mortgage, that's an amortized loan. Whenever you have a loan on an asset, like a car or a house or whatever, and you pay monthly payments, equal monthly payments on that car over a period of years, that is what is called an amortized loan. You're making equal payments, a payment every year. And over the course of those years and payments, you're paying off the loan and meeting your obligations for that liability. It's called an amortized loan. Now, in our studies, we're not, I'm not going to ask you to do this table that I'm going to do. I want to show you how it all works, but I need you to know the definition. An amortized loan is a series of equal payments over time. A non-amortized loan is interest payments only and principal at maturity. That's what a bond is, interest only. Amortized loan is a series of equal payments where you're paying interest and principal every payment. And that's why most of us have amortized loans because we do not have the credit or the collateral to have interest only loans. We don't have that financial power. Corporations have that financial power so they can issue bonds interest only. We and smaller businesses can only pay amortized loans. And that's an important concept in debt management. Okay, so let's look at this example. I'm gonna buy a car <clears throat> for $40,000. Can't be much of a car, but for $40,000. I'm gonna put down a down payment of $2,000. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask for financing over four years, monthly payments over four years of $38,000. My current FICO score is about 650. That's my current FICO. So remember, FICO score is anywhere from 300 to 900 of uh, your credit worthiness, your risk in the market. So my credit score, FICO score is about a little bit above average, 650. So I'm good. I qualify for a four and a half annual, four and a half percent interest rate annually on this loan of $38,000. All right. So this loan is for four years, but I'm making monthly payments. So that means I'm making four. 48 payments over four years. My interest rate per year is four and a half. So I'm going to have to need to calculate what is my interest rate per period in order to calculate my monthly payment. This is what the credit unions do, car finance companies, mortgage companies. This is how they calculate your monthly payment. So if I go into a formula equals, if my annual interest rate is four and a half percent. So I put in 0 0.045 and I divide that by 48. That's 48 months, four years, 12 payments a year. I get an interest rate per period of 0 0.0009375. That's roughly 0.094%, but that's the decimal. So what will my payment be on this $38,000 loan at that interest rate per period for 48 periods. Formula, function, we've been there before, financial. And now I look for payment, PMT. There it is right there, the payment function. And I can calculate my monthly payment. It says here, calculate the payment for a loan based on constant payments and a constant interest rate. Our interest rates, this is not a flexible rate. It's interest rate for the full four years. So I bring up that interest or bring up that function. And now the interest rate, now I type in the decimal, 0 0.0009375. That's my interest rate per period. There's 48 periods of this loan, 12, four years, 12 a year, and the there's, the future, the present value of this loan, all right, excuse me, the, the future value of the loan, what I'm going to pay back after you make your payment is $2,000. Okay. 
excuse me, my computer froze up just for a minute. I had to stop it and restart it up again. Such are the problems of modern technology. So again, let's go back to it. We're determining the payment on this loan of $38,000. So again, the interest rate in decimal is 0 .00, 0 0.00009375. That's the interest rate per period. The number of periods are 48. This is where we were, 48 periods. And the future, the future, excuse me, the present value we're borrowing minus $38,000. There's our payment, $809.98 every month for 48 months. All right, that, that payment is going to be determine my paying off this $38,000 loan. Now, what would be the amortization schedule for that? Well, we're borrowing $38,000 in payment number one, pay, period number one. Payment, our payment is $809.98. Why don't we just do this this way? Equals. $809.98. Our interest on our loan Right now for this first payment, well, if we take $38,000 times oops, times our interest rate per period, 0.0009375. And remember, I'm not gonna ask you to do this. I just wanna show you how it all works. There's my interest rate per this first payment. i taking the principal times my interest rate per period. So that means my principal, the amount I'm paying down on the loan is the difference between the payment and the interest. So I'm paying, that's how much I'm paying down on the loan, this first payment. So my ending balance then will be, I'm taking the 38,000 minus the principal payment, and there's my balance. Oops, right. I have a very loud, dirty keyboard, and I can't see. Oh, there we go. Minus the principal, and there's my principal balance at the end of this first payment, and that balance goes down here. So now I start it all over again. So watch what happens if I just take this series and copy it down to here and go all the way down to 48 payments and hit paste, there's my loan being paid off, all but 18 cents and that's probably due to rounding. So as you can see, my payment, I'm making $38,879.04 in payments, there's my interest, the balance will be the print. So I'm off 18 cents and that's because I probably didn't round it properly. But that's how an amortization loan works. Again, you do not have to do this table, but I wanted to see you. This is how a car loan, a mortgage works. It determines the principal and interest portion of the payment. You pay off the loan in installments. And that's why at the end of specific time periods, at the end of the first year, at the end of 12 payments, there's my balance. At the end of the second year, there's my balance. At the end of the third year, there's my balance. And at the end of the fourth year, I'm paying it all off. So that's what we want to do. That's what that means. But the key point in our discussions is not that you can calculate this, but what does that mean? Amortize means equal payments over time where principal and interest are being paid off. Unamortized loans are interest only. This concept will be more apparent as we get into our studies in the next couple of weeks. But that's the concept of present value in chapter five. Future value, present value, present value of annuity, series of payments, and amortization. We're going to be mainly concentrating on present value of annuity when we get to our case paper, where we're going to be doing an analysis of 20 years of cash flow off an investment. What does that mean? But also in assignment one, you'll be doing these types of calculations as well. 
So let's take a look at assignment, assignment two, excuse me. Let's take a look at assignment two. So here is assignment two. It's a series of multiple choice and a real world application, pretty short and sweet. Look at only five real questions, pretty, pretty quick, but just to understand and get it, make sure we practice the concepts of chapter five, okay? So you can do all your work on the Word doc or PDF that I've given you and just save it, put your name on it, send it, post it back to Blackboard, okay? So again, what is the future value of $10,000 deposited for five years, 6% simple interest? What would that future value be? A through D, you pick one. What is the present value of your trust fund if it promises to pay you $50,000 on your 30th birthday? Jeez, I wish I had one of those. Seven years from today. So seven years from today, you're gonna get 50,000. And this earns 10% annually. What is its present value today? $50,000, seven years from today, 10% annually. What is its present value? Ha ha. You will be receiving cash flows of 1,000 today, 2,000 at the end of year one, 4,000 at the end of year three, 6,000 at the end of year five. Notice there's no year two or four. What is the present value of these cash flows today at a rate of 7%? So you're, you're receiving one, three, seven, thirteen thousand dollars over the next five years. What is its present value discounted and when you receive that money to today at 7%? It's kind of a trick question. You got to think about that a little bit. And finally, question four, if, if $120,000 is borrowed for a home mortgage to be repaid at 9% interest over 30 years with monthly payments of 965.55, how much interest is paid over the life of the loan? We just looked at that about amortization. What is the interest on that loan? And then finally, question two, a little couple of paragraph answer I'm looking for. Please give a, 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 what is this? A example from your professional or personal life of present or future value. An example would be your savings account. Do, you, do not use this as an example, but give me an example of present or future value in your life. Your example should be instrument of present or future value and explain how these values are used in your example. All right. I could say, and you're not going to use this, my savings account is a, is a future value. I'm putting money in my savings account at a specific interest rate over a period of time, compounded over that period of time. What is it going to be worth in the future? I could calculate that now knowing how to do future value. I could calculate that value of money I'm putting into my savings account. So that's what I'm looking for. Give me an example in your life, personal or professional life of a future or present value example. Write that out in about two or three paragraphs. Be specific, give me all the data, read the question carefully and we're done. Okay. That is assignment two, short and sweet. So remember, as I said earlier, assignments one and two lead up to the midterm examination, which is coming up in another couple of weeks. These are practice for those problems then. And remember also the midterm examination will be doing another portfolio valuation of your portfolio. And some of you still have not fixed your portfolios from your original portfolio your indexes were wrong, something. So make sure you go back to discussion one and if, or go to your grade center. If you don't see a grade for week one, there's still want some work to be cleaned up there. So make sure you clean up that portfolio and the work that you need to do and post it because you're gonna need that correct information to do your examination in a couple of weeks. Another helpful hint. Okay. So that's our work for chapter five this week. Good luck on assignment two. We'll talk about assignment one in my update video at the end of the week. Have a great week, everybody. Adios.